Hello, welcome back to the channel. It is Dan Nocturne Knives coming at you today with a unboxing video. Uh, I haven't posted in a little while, been really busy, but excited to get back into it. I have a fun new knife here to unbox. Should be interesting. This is one that's been on pre order for a little while. Here in my hand, I have the uh, what's it called Spyderco Native. This one is an M4 version. It is a second, wearing some applied weapons tech scales, but that is not the focus of this video. So let's get into it here. Now, I'm trying not to do this without blasting my address everywhere. So you got some packing peanuts. And let's get those out of the way. We go, got some stickers. Maybe this will spoil it a little bit for you. It's coming from Devo Knives. Yep, Devo Knives, there you go. The guys behind this, uh, Kevin and Colin, massive fan of both of those guys. Really, really like them. Kevin is Lefty EDC on YouTube and on Instagram, and his partner in business is Colin Mason Pierre, I believe. He is CM Knife Designs, CM Designs, something like that on YouTube. I'll put it in the description. Both great guys. I have met them both on several occasions. Kev, uh, we're, we're buds. He's a great guy. Love Kev. He's got a great channel. Definitely check him out. Man, we've got some swag in here. This is actually my first Devo knife that I've ever gotten. I've handled a few at Blade Show a couple of times. And I've had, I believe I had an original stout. One of these things sent in for sharpening. But I've never actually owned one, which is a shame it's it's a mistake honestly should have gotten some devo action earlier really cool case got this uh faux leather i think cool black and gold scheme and here is the knife it is the devo stout v2 so quick backstory on this knife i first handled it at blade show last year and I was super, super blown away with it. I was absolutely blown away with it, fell in love with it, and knew I would have to get in on the pre-order. So here it is, about six months later, it has come in. This is the version with Arctic Storm. And you can see that satin on the blade. Take a little flip here. Oh, it is stiff. Excuse my my finger here it looks my nails fucked up so it's it might make some of the flipping of this a little bit difficult because it is primarily a middle finger deployment let's try thumb really easy with the thumb actually wow that is awesome so here is the stout v2 arctic storm fat carbon satin finish on the blade and wow i just gotta say it is a stunner looks amazing this one is a bolster lock which is a variant of a frame lock here. You can see it is the frame up here and it has these covers, these scale covers here that make this into like a bolster and that's where the lockup is. Which is actually, that's a really nice way to do this because it means you can't put pressure on the lock bar here as, um, as you're trying to flip and especially if you're a lefty. Now, I can put my thumb there and still easily flick it and I'm not adding pressure. Although with that knife, that's kind of irrelevant because there is a left-handed version. Because if you don't know, Kev, lefty EDC, is himself a lefty, as the name would suggest. Wow, really just kind of marveling at this right now. It is absolutely gorgeous. Wow, that action is so nice. Let's see, Ergo's really good here. Super neutral handle. Love that. And then it has a nice, big, generous finger choil here. You can get your entire finger in there. Like even if you got big sausage fingers, look, I can get my whole finger in here and I'm comfortable and it feels like I have even a little bit extra room. Like you can get your whole thumb in there. Big, big finger choil. Some nice, effective and minimal jimping up top. You can see it's it's not sharp, it's not painful, but it really does actually lock your thumb in 
right there. That's really well done jumping. And in this choked up position, you have this awesome depression right here that your thumb can kind of slot into, get nice uh, precision and power on your cuts there. I know that Kev is a big fan of the sheep's foot blade like you have going on here. It has a nice low tip. So for utility cuts, say you're cutting out a shipping label or opening a package, you can easily dip that tip in. It takes just a little bit of raising and the tip is engaged with whatever you're cutting. So classic kind of Devo sheep's foot there. Look at the action on that. Really nice, really nice. Materials on this, you have fat carbon for the scales right here, Arctic Storm. This feels really nice also, I'll, I'll get back to that. It feels really nice. You have a titanium frame, which includes the bolster. It's all one piece, this frame and bolster. You have, I believe, titanium backspacer here. You have, I'm assuming it's a steel loop over deep carry wire clip. I'm sure it's steel. And on the blade, you have Vanax, which is an ultra corrosion resistant stainless steel, really, really premium steel there. It has great edge holding properties and it is incredibly stainless. It's up there with LC200N uh, in terms of stainless, really, really nice. One of the most stainless uh, steels on the market today that still has high performance like LC200 in. See, not sure you'll be able to see this, but the inside of the handle, there you go, is skeletonized. It has some nice um, holes to skeletonize it out, and that is on both sides. See, so take a look at the balance point on this. It is right, right um, at the front of the main grip section which makes it feel really balanced in the hand. I, I think that's just about right. Yeah, right there. So you can put it in your hand here. It feels super light and nimble. And even up here, it still feels nice and light and nimble. It doesn't feel like a chunk in your hand. And the whole knife is really nice and light with the skeletonizing on the inside and then these the carbon fiber on the outside. It feels nice and light. Got this awesome milling up here on the top. And you can see here's a cool little feature on the top of the bolster. It's actually very slightly concave there on the top. Very cool, very subtle feature right there. Yeah, that detent is, I would say, perfect for the middle finger flip. It is easy, but still very, very snappy. I know uh, Kev goes by the name of the detent diva um, to some people and his attention to detail there definitely shows in all of the diva knives that I've handled they have all had a consistently similar nice and strong crispy detent like that really nice blade finish you have this awesome belt satin this knife is manufactured by best tech and they have done an excellent belt satin here. It's very crispy, very crisp grind lines, very consistent, and wonderfully, wonderfully thin. Hopefully you can see that at the tip. It is very, very thin. I can grab my calendars, calipers in a second, but I would estimate that's got to be ten thousandths or less behind the edge. Super cool. Take a look at centering. It is... Perfect, I think. Just about perfect. Yeah. Looks perfect to my eye. Look, you can really see how, how aggressive that hollow grind is. That's super cool. Got a nice lanyard post here instead of having a hole to mess with the aesthetics. You have just a minimal post in the back. You can easily add lanyard, but if there's no lanyard, it is no impact to the ergonomics or the functionality. Yeah really really enjoying this again i i mentioned that i first handled it at blade show last year in june and i was totally totally blown away with this knife i was really really impressed with it and i knew at that point that i would definitely have to get on the pre-order here's another really cool feature 
with this knife is you get an extra clip. You get a milled titanium pocket clip that fits into the uh, slots. Here you can see there are slots cut out for the pocket for the loop over clip and that just slots on right there. Um, see if you can, I can kind of give you an idea of what that will look like. That's what that will look like. Really cool, looks like a really solid clip as well. And you get this screw for it. Caliper measurement now. All right, behind, right behind the edge bevel, coming in at 0 0.011. So just about, oh, here we go, hold on. I was a little high up on that. So right behind the edge bevel, there you go, 0 0.0095. And that is, you can see here, right above the edge bevel, coming in at 10 thousandths or slightly less. Just about what I estimated with my fingers. That is so, so nice. Really impressive. That edge feels sharp as well. Get a little edge test here. Oh yeah, that is really, really good. Dang, I'm honestly, I'm incredibly impressed by this. This is absolutely fresh out of the box, untouched. That is an excellent, excellent factory edge. Pretty consistent. I don't know if you can tell super well from the video, but it is, yeah, pretty solidly consistent. Considering how thin this bevel is, not sure what this angle is. It's probably mm, 19 to 20 degrees, if I had to guess. Not crazy. Here we go. Goniometer in indicates it is coming in at about uh, 19. Yeah, eight or nine, 18 or 19 degrees per side. About what I estimated, and that is just fine for a factory bevel. I have no issue with that, especially when the grind is this thin. That's just a fine angle. Um, I would love it to be like 16, 17. That'd be super cool, but 18, 19, that's really not bad at all. And the bevel itself is incredibly sharp. I'm very impressed with that. Now this belt satin is awesome. You can see the same on the swedge, and then it is a horizontal satin on the flats. Looks really, really good. Looks awesome. Has these anodized titanium pivot collars in a blue to match the Arctic Storm. Looks sweet. My first impressions of this knife are incredibly, incredibly positive. I have to say there is only, uh, after looking at this for 15, 20 minutes now, there's only one thing that I have really identified as an issue. And that is this corner of carbon fiber right here is a little bit sharp, which when you're holding it back here in this grip, it kind of gets your finger just a little bit, but it's really, it's not that sharp. It's got just a very small chamfer on it. It's just a little bit sharp and there's not actually even a hard corner there. And this is the kind of thing that you could easily take a little nub of sandpaper and knock it off in about 30 seconds and it'd be super, super easy to do. So that is my only issue, again, that I can identify so far, that is it. Otherwise, clip tension is good. The carry depth is good. Here's what's all that's going to be sticking out of your pocket. Pretty subtle. It's kind of wide on the closed, but that's just the nature of a wide sheep's foot blade like this. Really not bad at all. Here it is compared to a native. You can see in terms of width, it's pretty similar to a native. Uh, width's this way. It's a little bit thicker than a native. Yeah, not bad at all. It's not heavy, coming in at 3.5 ounces. Super reasonable, super, super reasonable. The, on the length, it's coming in at just over seven and a half inches. Again, very reasonable. And the blade is something like three and a third, bit under three and a half, about three and a third. 
Again, great, talking about great size and weight for a general purpose EDC knife. Let's see, cutting edge is coming in at just very slightly under three inches. For all intents and purposes, it's about a three inch cutting edge. It's like 2.95. Great, I am I am loving this. And that's not even just my Kev and Colin bias showing. I would not sugarcoat my review of that, of this knife for them. I really, really am impressed by this. All my same thoughts that I had when I first saw it at Blade Show, it is a phenomenal knife. The design and the execution both is really, really good on this. I'm a massive fan of it. See, look at this fat carbon. It looks really, really nice and it feels excellent. The feel of this is phenomenal. Sometimes fat carbon can have this kind of chalky feel. This actually feels, it's smooth and feels almost warm and almost soft. It's really, really well done. I, I appreciate that a lot. I think it's great. No, no major sharp edges in terms of where the bolster and the scales meet up. You can feel right here. You can feel that just a little bit, but it's not a sharp catching edge or anything. And especially here where your fingers are going, no sharp edges or anything like that. Same on the back spacer. Very, very impressive. Um, lock bar access. You can see that right here. You have plenty of access and it even has some nice little texturing on it to give you grip. Access is very easy. Yep, super easy to get in there. And here's another feature I love. Take your thumb, disengage the lock bar. The edge does not fall onto your thumb. That is a massive pet peeve of mine when you disengage the lock bar and the edge starts to fall onto your thumb. On this, it is the unsharpened portion below the edge right there. And you'd have to go, you'd have to disengage it down here which is a totally unnatural position, and you actually barely have any leverage to disengage it. It's, it's almost impossible to do there. The natural place for your thumb to go right there, unsharpened edge falls in your thumb. Great design. Really, really well done right there. Okay, and that is my unboxing and first impressions of this knife, the Devo Stout version two in Van Axe blade steel, fat carbon on the handles, and this version has the belt satin. This is coming from Devo Knives, Colin and Kev. Great design duo in the community, really love what they're doing. And this knife is, as I have said, fantastic. I'm a massive fan of this knife. My first impressions are overwhelmingly positive. Very well done, Kevin Colin. Very impressed. I will be enjoying this one over the coming weeks. You can see, if you go follow my Instagram, I will be posting this plenty, I'm sure. I already have some pictures of it taken, some quick ones. I am on Instagram at Nocturne Knives if you want to check me out over there. I post sharpening updates and pictures and videos and all sorts of stuff like that, even occasionally some sharpening tips and whatnot. So if you're interested, you can find that linked in the description down below. And with all that said, thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.